Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's your boy, Turnip, and I'm back with another Halo Wars analysis video. This is more of a what-if video, a theoretical pipe dream, you could say, of how I would personally balance all of the units in the game. Now, this is based on my opinion alone, and if you got a problem with that, no, I'm just kidding. If you agree or disagree, just let me know down below what you thought. If you thought I was wrong, thought I was right. Let me know. I'd love to hear what you think. All right. Let's start off with the Marines. We'll just start off right at the beginning with the infantry for the UNSC. So first off, we've got the Marines. Overall, you know, they're supposed to be a weaker mainline infantry unit. Um, the unfortunate part is the infantry, the, well, the UNSC infantry are very rarely used in a lot of the matchups. Uh, I would say that they do a good amount of damage, but they're just very, very slow overall. It's it's tough to get them anywhere without pelicaning them and you know trying to use that to make up for their their lack of mobility. So I proposed a change. Uh, there is an upgrade for the Marines or any infantry in general. It's called adrenaline. And that's located in the field armory. So my proposal would be to take adrenaline, take that out of the field armory, because nobody really builds field armories that often unless it goes super late game. And I would put I would put adrenaline into the barracks as an upgrade for the for for all of the UNSC infantry, just to try to have them, you know, be utilized more. But as a trade-off, I would make it a Tech 2 upgrade. So it wouldn't be Tech 1 like it is now. You'd still have to upgrade to Tech 2, so you wouldn't be able to do very aggressive infantry plays early on with super fast infantry. You know, a little bit of a trade-off there. Next up, we've got the ODSTs, which are Cutter's super unit. And ODSTs are, are great. They do everything that Marines should do and you know they're they don't have to walk too far because you can just drop them in wherever you want um, this can create a lot of how i say unfun play styles or sometimes unfair i mean granted if you get to odsts they should be a very strong unit but i think that their their odst drop down like their ability to be called in i think that should have a little longer cooldown only because, you know, on some of the maps with the walls, like if you have an, a cutter that takes the walls on like Fort Dean or Glacial Ravine, you really can't get through them. And what I mean by that is you'll kill a unit in the wall, they'll drop down more ODSTs and just immediately take the wall again. And don't even think about if you've got multiple Captain Cutters on the other side. Uh, your only option really is to push in with a disruption bomb, disruption bomb the scout towers, and then from there try to overcome you know the waves of cobras or infantry. Um, but yeah, that's what I thought would make them a little, you know, a little more well-rounded is if they were uh, their their cooldown was a little bit longer. So I would provoke propose about another five seconds onto the uh the time it takes to recharge an odst drop but other than that no other real changes to their damage or their health and the same thing goes for the flamers and the spartans i feel that flamers are in a really good spot they do their job well they are very good against clearing infantry um, same with spartans they are kind of a high risk high reward if you get them out early, you could lose them because they're so expensive. They're about 300 and then the upgrades. Uh, and then you might get you might get some lucky hijacks off. Who knows? Uh, Spartans are also massive buffs to the UNSC vehicles. And that's going to that's gonna come up a little bit later when we talk about some other units like the Scorpion. So we'll we'll put a pin on that and we'll come to, we'll come back to that a little bit later. OK, next up on the list. This one might be, this might be the most controversial one, but we're going to talk about the Warthog. So right now, the Warthog is definitely the best unit in the game. 
I think that it does too much. It is too much of a all-purpose unit when it really should fulfill its role of being more of a light scout unit. So right now, the meta revolves around a lot of goshog play and uh, a lot of warthog aggression. And that's good and all. That you should be able to harass with warthogs. I think that you should be able to do that. Um, it gets really difficult if you're going up against UNSC in like a 1v1 situation. Warthogs are very fast. And if you're like a covenant, it's, it's kind of hard to have a direct counter to warthogs. You know, instead of just building turrets right away. Or teching up into wraiths immediately. Uh, also, the warthogs can be built right from the UNSC main base and you can build them out of any base you don't need to have tech level um, and then you can use your building slots to create something else like an air pad or a vehicle depot to get tanks out even a barracks so they they just blend very well with the entire UNSC army and I think their power needs to be brought down a little bit so what I would do, I would first, I would make them a two population unit, raise it up from one to two. Uh, I would lower their HP by 10%. So like an overall, an overall health, health nerf. So they're a little lighter and they're not, not as strong when they get those upgrades. Uh, but as a trade off for this, I would give them a 5% bonus against air units. So if they're, they can be a good option to take out some some banshees or some hornets, and they'll they'll have a little bit of a anti-air capability, and I think that's a little lore accurate too. To my knowledge, the warthogs are they serve more as a like an anti-air, anti-infantry kind of kind of thing in the the Halo, the Halo lore. I think the most substantial change would be the population uh, increase. It just cuts down on a lot of their numbers, and I would say that is the strongest, the strongest advantage that Goss has, or Warthogs, is you can have up to 40 of them, and a lot of times they can just overwhelm armies of tanks, just no problem, especially if you've got two players that are maxed out on Warthogs. Uh, so I think that would be a good change for them, and yeah, let's move on to the Elephant. Now the elephant I think needs a lot of love. It is rarely used except for some meme strategies or like some cheeses. I would say that there needs to be an X factor, a reason that you would want to build an elephant and keep it alive. So as a buff to the elephant, I would make, I, I'd implement a bonus that makes units train 50% faster. So if you're building Marines or if you're building um, if you're building, say, flamethrowers, they're going to come out, and they're going to come out in half the time they normally would if you had a barracks. And on top of that, I'd, I'd give them a little bit more health because I feel that they're sort of squishy right now. So another 10% health bonus as well. I think that would help too with maybe some early, early rushes. Like if you're, uh, say, getting Covenant rushed or... If you've got a lot of warthogs coming up on you, you could, you know, get a couple marines out a lot faster than you would be able to. So yeah, I think that would help the elephant out a lot, and I think it would make people want to build them a little bit more. So there's that. Okay, next up on the unique units, we just covered the elephant, and now we're going to cover the gremlin. This is Professor Anders' uh, stunning vehicle. Very, very strong, especially in late game. Once you get to chain amplifier, that's pretty much just GG right there. If you're not if you're not Anders yourself and you don't have your own gremlins, just forget about it. Like if you're in a UNSC mirror cutter versus Anders with like three chain amp, chain amp gremlins, would just be it, it's, it's very difficult to come back from that. And I was thinking to myself, you know. That's kind of how it's supposed to be. They are supposed to be that late game unit, especially with that chain amp upgrade being a tech four. Um, it's supposed to be strong. Uh, however, I think that the stun beam 
I think the stun beam is, it has a little bit too long of a range. Uh, it feels that gremlins, they, they just get, you can just kind of stick them back at the army and there's, there's very real, there is very little risk to using them. Sure that their, their health is kind of low, but I think that you can still keep them relatively safe behind your tanks and get the stuns off and then just kind of run them away. So I would propose to lower the range of the stun beam by about 20%. Not the red laser beam. That's that's actually just the damaging laser. I wouldn't I wouldn't adjust that at all. Um, but the stunning beam. And surprisingly, as it may sound, because uh, I, have, I have tested this, so I know it is it is accurate. The the red laser is the only one that is affected by the gremlins it's called focusing lens uh, it's the first upgrade for the gremlins and it increases the range it says increases the range of the gremlin or like the, the beam but it's only for the red attacking laser it does not increase the the stun beams range at all uh, so there's that i would drop that down a little bit and make the gremlins make you have to get a little bit closer to the fight and that might change some of the change some of the outcomes a little bit because you have to be a little more vulnerable with those gremlins. So coming back from the the tippy top with the warthog all the way down to possibly the worst unit in the game is Sergeant Forge's Cyclops. And I think we just have to start from the ground up with the Cyclops and completely rework them, add more tools to their kit. Right now they're very slow. They have really little viability because they're a melee building killer unit. So you have to get them to your enemy's base. And on top of that, they can only melee things. So it's very, very uh, situational, kind of gimmicky. It's true, they do have a, a special ability where they can pick up little pieces of junk with the, the Y button ability or the special attack. And they can throw those objects. But... It's, it's really hard to pull off if you don't do it. So what would I change? Uh, I would give them their healing ability. I would give that to them just right out the bat. Base kit, repair kit. Have that just be a part of them. And you don't need to buy the upgrade to get repair kit. And I would also lower their high torque joint upgrade, which makes them move faster. I would bring that down a tech level. I would keep that at tech 2. Uh, instead of tech three because it costs 800 resources to get uh, the tech three upgrade high torque joint and you know you have to get to that point anyways in the game most people aren't even building cyclops I, I couldn't tell you one example where you would build a cyclops unless you were say turtling and you wanted to have like one or two to heal friendly vehicles or or buildings uh, other than that, they're just not used at all. So that's what I would do. Uh, I would also lower that upgrade cost from 800 to 500 and give them a 10% damage and health buff. So hopefully that would bring them into line and make them a little more viable, make them somewhat worthy. And yeah, also they are affected by adrenaline as well. So that infantry upgrade bonus so maybe there would be some uh, possibilities of synergizing with that upgrade as well as uh, high torque joints so yeah that's the cyclops and hopefully that would make it a little more viable all right next up we've got the scorpion tank everybody's favorite tried and true probably the second best unit in the game Debatable with with a few Covenant units, but I'm gonna just stick to my guns and say the second best unit in the game uh, Scorpions right now are very strong. They're they're wonderful all-purpose and If you get them strong enough there they can even counter enemy air units like Hornets or Banshees Which I think that is a problem. I don't think that the mainline battle tank should be able to shoot down uh, well, I mean, still be able to engage, but not really combat effectively, uh, enemy 
enemy air units like hornets or, or, or banshees for that matter. So I would propose to uh, lower their damage of their machine gun by 30% against enemy air units. So that would give you know the counter units a little bit more of a fighting chance when it comes to attacking the, the scorpions and not having to you know just build scorpions of your own to counter scorpions. You could actually use the counters that were intended. Um, also, there is a few glitches with the scorpion right now, like the canister shell glitch, which lets you if you if you do it well enough, you can kill uh, you can kill infantry like you get infinite canister shells and you can just kill every infantry unit that you you can see, and that's a problem too. That should not be in the game. I think that should be removed. It was not intended. There's also the cryo canny glitch, which a very short, it's very similar to the infantry one. However, if you, if you cryo bomb anything, it could be buildings, it could be vehicles even, and then you do the canister shell glitch, you can kill the, you can kill, you can use infinite canister shells just like you were able to do on the infantry. So it's completely unbalanced. It's unfair. Just imagine you are, say, a, uh, let's say you're a Captain Cutter and you've got a army of, uh, you know, power turret tanks and you're going up against an Anders with power turret tanks. She cryo bombs you and then comes up with all of her tanks and just canister shells every single one of your tanks while they're frozen. You can't do anything. You're just sitting there and she's getting infinite canister shells off and... I know it's in the game. Some people might think it's, you know, it's just part of the game. But if you think that that's balanced, I would say that you are mistaken. So after that gets fixed, also I would uh, decrease the scorpion's damage against anti-vehicle units. So I think that they overperform against some of the anti-vehicle units like hunters and cobras. Um, if you can get to them fast enough you can really just wipe out the whole army of anti-vehicle anti units with your vehicles. And I know it depends on a lot of upgrades and how many there are, but I would propose a 20% damage reduction versus anti-vehicle units. Uh, so that way they just have a harder time dealing with their counters. And I, I would say that might be the biggest flaw of the Scorpions is they they just do too well against the units that are supposed to counter them and i think that's the that's one of the main flaws that needs to be addressed with them so that's it with scorpions i wouldn't change anything else besides that um so just overview fix the glitches reduce reduce the machine gun damage against air units and then also reduce the damage that they do to anti-vehicle units okay all right let's move on wolverines that's our next uh, UNSC vehicle, they are pretty good. I think that they do just fine. They do great damage. They've got a long range. Uh, they move fairly quickly. So, yeah, I think that they do good work. Uh, however, one thing I would change by them, I think that they do a little too well against buildings. Like, uh, you know, UNSC bases or Covenant bases. I don't think that they should be a unit that you can take out a lot of bases quickly with. So I would reduce their damage against buildings by about 25%. So that way you just can't roll up on a base, volley it down, and then grenade, you know, use your grenade to take out all the supply pads. So I think that they should be focused on anti-air, and then you should have other units that are building killing units. I feel that uh, the Wolverine should be more of a support unit and not a be-all, end-all. Like, if you were, say, 1v1-ing, if it was like a UNSC versus a Covenant player, in the, in the current matchup, in the current meta it is now, you could just build all Wolverines and you would probably be okay. Wolverines and Flamers, it's like, what else that can they do? Uh, if, they, if they go into air, you've got that covered, you can just roll up before they can get too much stuff out and take down lots of their buildings and and yeah so that's my proposed nerf to them other than that i think they're okay 
Um, and yeah, I know a lot of this is, it's sounds like a situational, but just in my experience, I have seen these units used primarily for uh, a long time. And I think that these, these changes would be a healthy balance. Okay, our last UNSC vehicle, well, land vehicle that is, it's gonna be the Cobra. And the Cobras, I like them a lot. I think they do good damage. They've got upgrades that help deflect damage, uh, but they're super slow. They're very slow, hard to get them where you need to be because uh, Scorpion tanks or Wraiths have such high mobility. A lot of the times the best counter to Cobras is to just not even fight them at all and go around or go a different way. So that's why you see Cobras, their best usage is to have them stationary near a point of interest like a base or a choke point or put them behind laser walls, a place they don't have to move and they can get lots of, uh, they can get really good line of sight on the vehicles that they're trying to hit. So what I would propose is make them lock down 25% faster so that way they can set up and unpack a little more quickly, get into the fight faster, and also uh, make them speed them up by about 15%. I think that would be a, a good change. And it would make them go a little bit faster and they can get to where they need to go. And uh, yeah, that's what I would do. But other than that, I think that they are good and don't need too much work done on them. Just, just some speed changes. I almost forgot about probably the most infamous unit in Halo Wars, the Grizzly tank. And it's famous for all the wrong reasons because it sucks dookie doo doo. It is a wet blanket. It's a fat fart in a diaper. Uh, the Scorpion tank's final upgrade for Sergeant Forge. Uh, supposedly on paper, it's supposed to have more health, more damage, and just be an overall better unit than a power turret tank, but this is not the case. When they did the testing for the Grizzlies, they must not have done it too thoroughly because the canister shell ability is just way less effective than the power turret canister shell. It does barely any damage against enemy tanks. It's very inconsistent. And it just makes getting Grizzly upgrades, it makes getting Grizzlies a very bad idea when you're going up against uh, multiple armies of enemy tanks because they just, they lose. You Imagine that you pay 1,800 resources to upgrade your tanks and you're actually shooting yourself in the foot because they just don't, they don't work. So that would be fixed, of course. We would make the canister shell actually do do its job and I think that's just about all you would need to do to the Grizzlies it would make them a high cost upgrade to increase the power of your tanks and that would be really all you would need to do because their health is on point but you would just have to make them a you know an actual decent fighting unit okay last up on our UNSC list are the are the flying units the air units so first off we've got the Hornet which is the mainline UNSC flying vehicle. It's, it, feel, it just feels very weak. Hornets, I think they need a little bit more health, and I think they need to do a little bit more damage against enemy vehicles. So we're gonna buff their health and their damage by 10%. Um, on top of that, they're gonna be having reduced, uh, they will be receiving reduced damage from the Scorpion turrets, like the, uh, what was I saying? The the machine guns on the Scorpion. So they should counter tanks a little bit easier this time around. Uh, other than that, I think their speed is fine. I think their upgrades are good with the wingman. I just think they need a, a slight kick in the bum and get them a little bit beefier of a unit. I know that they do cost 250 so they are fairly cheap. Uh, so that's why I wasn't doing a massive increase in health and damage. Just a very... Very slight tweak, and I thought that would push them into the right direction and, you know, make them make them more reliable of a unit rather than hardly ever building them. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. The final upgrade for the Hornet is the Hawk. That's from Professor Anders, and I think that's in a perfect spot. I really don't have any gripes about the Hawk. It's quick. It does a lot of damage against vehicles. 
Uh, it takes a while to get, to get there. You got to spend, thir I think it was like 1350 if I can remember, for the upgrade. You got to be on tech four. Uh, I think they're in a good spot. I really wouldn't adjust them at all. And yeah, that's the hawk. But something that does need adjustment is the big old fat ass vulture. The big fat Uber unit from the UNSC. Easily the worst special unit in the game, the worst Uber unit. The vulture, it, it, it also needs a rework. Just like the just like the Cyclops. We need to make some significant changes to it. Uh, first of all, they're very expensive. I think that they need to cost a little bit less. So they're at 900 resources right now. I want to move those down to move them down to 800. It's just it's very expensive to fund a massive army of vultures that just get taken out so quickly. So on top of that, let's increase their movement speed by 5% and give them 15% more health and damage. So make them more beefier. They're supposed to be a very beefy unit. Supposed to be end game. Supposed to be an Uber unit, and they just don't feel like an Uber unit. They just get stasis or Mac Blast, or Cryo Bombed. Uh, you know, one Mac Blast could kill a Vulture, and you know, if you upgrade your Cryo Bomb, you can take out a few of them. Uh, so there's that, and I also want to take the training time down. I want to make them come out about 15 seconds faster, so that way you can make a little more of them in a quicker amount of time. Uh, and they're very, like, similar to the other units uh, I've mentioned earlier, like the Spartans are kind of a high risk, high reward. If you can get them where they need to go, they're going to they're gonna dish out lots of damage. They will definitely be putting, putting, the, uh, putting the pound town down, putting the pain out there. But right now they're just very slow, uh, hard countered by vampires with the stasis. So we're going to buff up their damage. Make them a little faster, make them come out faster, and make them a little cheaper as well. And I think that would be a great change for the Vulture and make them a little more viable, more usable. I got to think of other synonyms I can say instead of calling everything viable. <laughs> okay, but that's going to wrap up the UNSC units, and let's move on to the Covenant units. All right, so our first stop is going to be the Honor Guard. This is the Prophet's unique unit. And the Honor Guard, it's, it's a mixed bag with the Honor Guard. So I would say that they're a little weak right now. Uh, their biggest strength is being a melee infantry unit. They're pretty strong. They've got good amounts of health. They have great DPS against other enemy infantry like, say, Marines, Flamers, Brute Squads. I think that they do well countering those units. Some of their drawbacks, though, uh, a lot of the Covenant have, well, not a lot, every Covenant has an infantry that they can create from their from their Citadel. And it's important to use those to take control of the hooks like the, uh, like the resource elevators or the reactors. So, you know, you can put a Suicide Grunt, an Honor Guard, or a Brood Squad in any of those and reap the benefits. Well, the problem is the Honor Guard can't do anything once he's inside there. He's he's kind of uh, defenseless, as it would be. He's, he's a melee unit, so he can't really do anything. Um, so I think we need to give him a trade-off that makes him a little different from the rest of those units and makes him strong in in his own way. So I'm gonna say so I'm gonna say let's give him his cloak upgrade as a base kit. Uh, so his tech two upgrade is cloak, and his third his third upgrade is tech three upgrade is personal shield, which gives him a little shield that goes over his uh, you know, his person, makes him stronger. So having cloak be a base kit, I think would do a few things. First, it would be a nice scouting tool for the prophet, and also it would be uh, it would really help the honor guard get to places he needs to go like for example let's say you're getting you got to go take this supply crate and uh or not supply crate supply elevator and you've got two warthogs that are camping your lift right they're gonna try to because they know your honor guard's about to come out of your citadel so you can go and take that resource elevator let's say he's got cloak 
you can cloak him safely, get him through there, and that's going to deny, you know, you losing that honor guard right away to those, to those warthogs or a chopper, and it's going to help the prophet out in the early game, which, which that is his weakest point. Right when the match starts, he has very little options when it comes to, uh, you know, getting getting out there early and, uh, you know, put taking map control. Like some of the other leaders are very, very good with map control. So yeah, let's give the, the Honor Guard the cloak ability as the base kit. So it, that means that they just come with it every game, no matter what. And we'll bring that shield upgrade down to a, a tech two upgrade as well. And that's, that's all I'd change for them. I wouldn't touch their damage at all. Our next unique Covenant unit, this is the Arbiter's Suicide Grunts. And these Grunts are great. They're awesome. They're wonderful build, building killers. Uh, they've got little plasma pistols that don't do too much, but that's not that's not why you, you get these guys here. You use them to blow up buildings. You use them to attack an enemy leader or a, a high value target. So you drop a few of these in, can make some really good cheeses, some some good rush rush potential there. Uh, but there's a the a few a huge flaw that's not really their fault, but they're a very glitchy unit. So when you drop in uh, suicide grunts, they tend to really not listen to what you tell them to do. They will oftentimes just stand there and get rammed or get beamed or vortexed and they won't go where you want them to go. So uh, they do great damage. They've got a decent amount of health, but I, I think we just fix their, their pathing, correct some of the, the bugs that are caused when you drop in suicide grunts through the, the hot drop feature, or you know, porting them to your leader. I think if we fix that, that'll be a buff in its own and it will make them It'll, it'll make them more valuable and I think that would be you know I think that was in, that was intended they should be how they were intended to be and I don't think we need to change their damage or really change their health at all because they they do just fine in that in that field but yeah let's 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 get them working properly our last unique covenant unit is the brute well not last unique unit but the last unique infantry is going to be the brute squad Unique to the Brute Chieftain, they're the strongest rushing unit in the game. Uh, some matchups against Brutes are just really difficult to, to stop. Their early game pressure is awesome. They're one of the best garrisoning units out there because the Brute can just drop a Brute into like anything and the Brute will just kill all the rebels around it and then they can go off and do something else. Uh, so to... the they're overperforming. I, I want to bring down their reliability a little bit. I want to make them cost a little bit more. So they're 150 right now. I think we should bump them up to 200 resources and then add about 10 seconds to the build time of each Brute Squad. Um, so the Brutes, they're very quick. They can get out fast and then you can just stack up a bunch of them. And let's let's take for example the brute versus the arbiter on chasms. If in the right hands, that's a very very difficult matchup for the arbiter to to handle because you just stack brutes up, and the arbiter is just too poor to to do anything against the brute. Um, you got to really screw it up on the brute side to to not you know to to not pull that off. Same thing on Blood Gulch. The ability, or, or actually both of the blood maps, so Blood River and Blood Gulch, there are the two resource uh, elevators. The Brute can take that really quickly, move on to the opponents, take that, and then push right up onto the base, and he's got really quick eco. Often you can just put up a haul and start spamming grunts as well. Uh, so I think that the... The brutes just need to be a little bit, uh, a little bit tweaked in that aspect, make them cost a little more, and not come out as fast. And I think that that will kind of slow the chieftain down a bit and give the other side a little more time to prepare. All right, so that's the end of the special units, as we say. 
Let's move on to some of the vehicles, the Covenant vehicles. We'll start with the Ghost, which is available to the Arbiter and the Prophet. They're cheap, they're fast, and they're pretty good. Uh, the problem with the Ghosts is where they're where they're placed. They're they're in the factory, and I don't I think that they should be in the Covenant Citadel. Uh, when I played the Halo Wars Leader mod, they actually you were able to build ghosts from the gravity pad, and I really like that feature. Um, I think that the main problem with the Covenant Scout units, like the the Ghost or the Chopper, is you have to build a factory to get them. Whereas the UNSC, they do not have to build a factory; they can just build them right out of the center of their base, and that oftentimes allows the UNSC to take pretty much every crate that's on the map in in like a one v one or two v two, three v three. They can just take all of them because they build multiple warthogs at the start and now they've got a nice standing army that they can use to harass the covenant or you know harass a unsc with so i think that we don't really need to change too much about the ghost in terms of damage in terms of health but i think we need to move them and make them a little more accessible um, and as a as a trade-off i think that we we will make the Ghost a Tier 1 unit. Uh, just because they come equipped with, with cannons, like they come equipped with laser cannons and the UNSC vehicles, like the, um, not the UNSC vehicles, just just the, the Warthog, you have to upgrade to Gunner. Just like on the Chopper, you have to also upgrade to Auto Cannons. So we don't really want to have, like, I guess eight, you know, Eight ghosts taking out warthogs before they even have a chance to fight back. Um, so I would make them a, a tier one unit, meaning you have to have your temple up first. So you you know if you want to go temple first and then start building some ghosts, I think that would be a good idea. Uh, it would kind of even it out. You, you're giving up some of that eco to get some more units out versus going a few supply pads then into a uh, temple to get those those ghosts going. But I think that would be a good change for them. And let's let's transition right into the chopper. They're they're in the same boat as the ghosts. They're only you have to build a factory, which on top of not being able to uh, uh, you know have a, a good scouting army, you have to use one of your building slots for a factory. Whereas the UNSC does not need to do that. They can just create them right out of the, the center of their base, like I was saying. So I would also move them to the Citadel, like the, the Central Covenant base or, or possibly the Gravity Lift. Um, but the Choppers, they have their own unique problem. So the Choppers have to align themselves to hit their target. Like they, they can't strafe like the Ghost or the Warthog does and like backpedal and shoot at things. They have to be looking directly at something to shoot it or in pursuit of it. So. If they're chasing like warthogs down, they can shoot their cannons at it. But if they're running away, they can't fire their cannons. They can't aim backwards. And that's just a flaw of the chopper's design itself. It can't strafe, it can't kite things. Um, but they're very they're very strong. They've got a lot of health as a trade-off for that. Um, but their auto cannons does have to be, you do have to upgrade to auto cannons, kind of like the warthog. Uh, but even when they get auto cannons, they are still very, very weak. Um, so what I'd like to do, I'd like to keep the chopper's health the same, but I really want their damage to do a lot more. I think that they should outclass every other scout unit because of the limitations that they have. So I want to buff their damage by 30% um, and put them into the Citadel. And I think that would really make them a stronger, a stronger scout unit and easily able to take on ghosts or warhogs if need be. So that's my thoughts on the two scout units, the ghost and the chopper. Okay, we've got a few more Covenant vehicles. So we've got the Locust, and I really do like the Locust. It's pretty weak, it's fragile, does a lot of base damage, it's a building killer. Got long range. I don't think I'd adjust anything about their health, anything about their damage. One thing I would do though, I would give them an X factor, kind of like we did with the 
uh, elephant. Because we don't really see locusts that often. They, they're very seldom used. So I want to make them clamber just like the scarabs can. So scarabs can climb over certain terrains like uh, like mountains or uh, certain walls they can climb up. And I believe in the, the leader overhaul mod, I believe that they implemented this change too. And I really did like that. And I think that would be a good change for the locusts because they even show them in some cutscenes in the campaign climbing over stuff with their their big claws and their big big meaty claws. Uh, so yeah, I think that would be a good change for them. Give them a little more versatility as a trade-off for their weak health and having to stand still and, and fire at a base. Uh, just saying, hey, please shoot me, right? The last Covenant vehicle is the Wraith. And I think the Wraith is in a good spot. I wouldn't really change the Wraith at all. Uh, they have the, the, the shield upgrade, which is very good for microing purposes. You can use them strategically to take damage and then move the weak ones out of the way so they can recharge. Uh, they're not as strong as tanks, like scorpion tanks, and I think that's how it should be because the uh, that's a trade-off for Covenant. They have weaker vehicles or weaker units overall. So I don't think I'd really change much about them or anything rather and just leave them alone. Okay, following up with that, we're going to move over to the Covenant Air units, which are the better air units in the game. The Banshee, we'll start with the Banshee. Uh, probably the best, one of the best air units. It is very fast, does a lot of damage, and is one of the, the best counters currently to uh, power turret tanks and vehicles in the game. They are great at taking out buildings. Uh, they're... Their largest strength, I would say, is their speed. And they have a boost functionality, which has a cooldown on it. But I don't know if that really works, because every time you boost around, you can just keep boosting. There's no real cooldown to, to boosting your Banshees. So that's one thing I'd like to change. I would like to add uh, a 10 second cooldown to the boost of the Banshee. So that would make you... That would force you, rather, to be more selective on where you're going to boost the Banshees. And it'll make you think a little more strategically, rather than just boosting everywhere and not really having to think about it. I think this would really help some of the slower anti-air units like infantry and also just UNSC in general be able to catch up to the Banshees. Because, let's face it, if you're playing a triple UNSC... Really, all you have to do is just go, somebody go Banshees and deny all of their expansion bases, and there's not much they can do. You can just run in with the Banshees and run out, and there's very little you can do to punish uh, multiple groups of Banshees. So yeah, I would just add a 10 second cooldown to their boost. They can still boost at the same speed, do the same damage, but they're going to, uh, they're going to be a little slower getting to where they need to go. Next, we've got the Vampire. Uh, the Vampire is an anti-air air unit. Kind of odd, I know, right? But it's it's awesome. Easily an S-tier unit. Uh, it's got the needles that it can use to engage other... Uh, excuse me. Just had a piece of cake. Uh, it can use to engage other, other air units, like Hornets, Banshees, other Vampires even. And it's got a special ability that allows you to stasis... Stasis attack and stun in place things like the uh, Banshees, Hornets, Hawks, and you trap them in place. So that's awesome. I think that's a I think that's a good ability. Uh, there is a glitch that you can stasis units across the map. I'm not really too sure how to do it, but I think that should be removed. That should be fixed. You should only be able to stasis units that you can see and are in your line of sight. Uh, but yeah, fix that glitch, and also, I would reduce reduce the damage that they do against infantry units, things like ODST squads, hunter squads, um, grunts. In general, yeah, I would just I would decrease the effectiveness that the vampire has against those units because uh, they they do pretty well against you know things on the ground. If you've got a full 
army of them, they can they can do some extra damage and they can help out. So I think their main focus should be again on that anti-air capability and they shouldn't really have too much more functionality. So yeah, long story short, I would reduce the damage against infantry by 15% with the vampires. Next up, we've got the engineer. This is the final flying covenant unit. Uh, engineer really doesn't need too much work. It works fine as it is now. The engineers are, you know, they can heal things. That's that's all they do. They just heal things. They fly around. So they've got great mobility. They're decently fast, especially with their upgrade. Um, I'd like to see them built a little more often. I don't think they're really built too often. And I think that should change. So uh, I want to lower their build time by five seconds just to maybe encourage people to make some more or, or help get some out in case you're you're under attack or need a quick heal. So just a slight, slight change there. I, I think they're in a pretty good place right now. Okay, so we went through the vehicles. We went through the air units. Now we have to look over to the hall. And in the hall, that's where the infantry units for the Covenant are. And they suffer from the same fate as the UNSC, where a lot of the infantry are pretty slow. So we'll start off with the grunts, which we have the elite variant and the brute variant. And grunts are pretty good. They are plentiful. They've got the grenade ability with the sticky grenades. They're pretty slow, but they you can you know upgrade them to do more damage with Needler and Deacon. And they're supposed to be a, a counter to air units, like a soft counter to air units. However, they're very, very rarely used for that purpose. Uh, the main purpose we see with grunts are you stack them up and then you drop them next to a opponent's base, like right on top of the base so they don't have to go anywhere because they're, they're so slow that they can't catch anything. They're not going to be able to keep up with those air units. Well, rather than fight them, they'll just run away from them. Um, so something I would adjust with the grunts I would bump their speed up. I would make them faster. I'd say about 20% 20, 20 faster. That way they can catch up a little, easy, little more easily with things like uh, banshees flying around, hornets, uh, that sort of thing. But I think they do good damage, especially with those grenades. They can, uh, they're really good involved in like a, a infantry ball. There's a lot of targets, so they can be kind of annoying to take out. So yeah, that's it for the grunts. Then we have the Jackal Squad, the Sniper Squad, and Jackals, I like them a lot. They're kind of slow, um, but I think overall the unit is fine. Um, I don't really want to change anything with them. I might bump their speed up a little bit, maybe like 5% to keep up with the rest of the infantry that we've been increasing. Um, but other than that, Jackals are great. They've got aw awesome range, awesome damage. And they do good. They're great, uh, great units. Great for clearing structures and also for, you know, handling covenant leaders. Uh, most of them, most of them that are, that is. Uh, but yeah, jackals are great. Wouldn't do too much to those. Okay, the last infantry unit for the covenant that we'll talk about is going to be, or well, are the hunters, the hunter pair. The hunters, I think, need a little more love. Um, so. What we did with the what I did with the scorpions is I decreased the uh, damage that the scorpion tanks will do against anti-tank vehicles. So I think that is a buff in its own. I don't think we need to adjust their health or their damage really that, at all uh, because of that change we made with scorpion tanks. But something I want to do, I want to make them a little bit faster. Uh, what hunters struggle with the most, like like we were saying with the grunts. They just can't keep up with those those other vehicles because every vehicle is faster than the hunters. You can outrun them with literally every vehicle, I think, except like a locust or an elephant or maybe a, you know, a cobra. The very, very slow lumbering vehicles. But, you know, if you see them with tanks, what you can do is just turn right around, try to find a different way or just shoot a canister shell off and then run away and recharge it. So hunters are, yeah, they, they suffer from that, that curse and kind of like the grunts, they're, they're very, they're very good when you drop them next to bases, 
and they don't really have to go looking for a fight. You bring the fight to them, and they're more of a they're better as a defensive unit, I would say. So I want to give them a, a little bit of a speed boost. I'd say about 20%. Speed them up a little bit. That way they can keep up with uh, things like warthogs, keep up with tanks that are running away, and give them more of a viability. Give them more of a more of an edge. You know what I'm saying? Show the show those hunters the love. Okay, let's talk about the Uber unit now, the Scarab. So the Scarab, we all know it's the ultimate weapon for the Covenant. Huge battle tank. It's lots of lots of damage and lots of health points as well. And I don't think those I don't think those need to be changed really at all. They're pretty good. Scarabs are awesome in with packs of engineers to help heal them. Um, yeah, overall, I wouldn't do too much. I, I think we need to see a little more scarabs, to be honest with you. We really don't see them in any game type except uh, 3v3. Maybe some some a few situations in 1v1s, but we don't really see them in 2v2s. We don't see them in a lot of matchups. So that being said, I, I want to lower their cost by 500 and bring them down to 2,500 total. And I think that would help get people to build more scarabs and yeah, change up the change up the meta a little bit. Okay, lastly, I want to talk about the Covenant leaders and their powers and abilities. They technically count as units themselves. So let's talk about what we would do or what I would recommend to balance them. So let's start with the Arbiter. So this one might be a little controversial as well. There is the Arbiter glitch. So it's a rage running glitch where you can instantly enter rage mode and uh, attack enemy units like Warthogs, tanks, Covenant ban or not, not Banshees, Covenant vehicles on the ground like a ghost. And this was unintended. Uh, I think that should be removed. And it, the rage should revert back to like the, the normal rage with the Y ability. Uh, reason for that is there needs to be some sort of indicator that the rage mode is starting. I think that would help with the overall gameplay. If you can see the Arbiter clashing his swords, you get a little more of a visual cue to maybe start focusing him down. Because if you don't have a disruption bomb, you are just you're screwed with a, a good arbiter player they're going to just destroy everything you have you the really only option you have is to just pray that your canister shells hit him or that you're able to get a d-bomb down and then everybody just you know circles in on him and rams him and tries to just kill him immediately so i would fix that arbiter glitch just to make it a little more difficult for them to start the rage mode and give the opponent a little more time to react to that. And also, I think that he does a little too much damage. So I would bring down the overall damage of the Arbiter by 5%. And I think that would help out. He already can do massive amounts of damage with combos and he pretty much one hit kills things like Warthogs and uh, he doesn't have too much of a trouble dealing with, you know, groups of tanks, like three or four all by himself. So I think that would put him more of an more on an even playing field with some of the other tools that other uh, leaders have. So that's uh, that's Shirley for you. That's the Arbiter. And next up, we'll talk about the Brute Chieftain. So surprising as it may sound, the Brute Chieftain is actually the fastest leader of all three covenant leaders his ground speed makes him the fastest moving covenant leader and that also helps a lot with his early game uh, his early game pressure his early game rush he's able to get to those buildings quite fast like the resource buildings so i would slow him down by about five percent and also i think that we would take his health down a little bit i think it's a little too strong in the early game uh, i'm not talking about a crazy amount of health but i'd say take about 10 percent of his health down um 10 health nerf 
just so his early game isn't as oppressive as a lot of these other leaders are. So with the changes to the Brute Squad and changes to the Chieftain, I think that would help uh, round out the early game and make it a little easier for other leaders to deal with the Brute. So I think that'd be a good change. I don't wanna nerf him into the ground. I still think he has a place being an early game leader, but at this point, I think it's a little bit too powerful with you know, his current state. So I think that would be a good change. And yeah, let's move on to the last leader, the Holy Prophet, our wise, our wise leader, uh, the sexiest man in Halo Wars, Prophet of Regret. He does a decent amount of damage when you get his upgrades. He's kind of weak without them. He is, uh, you know, what we like to call the baby prophet before he gets his first upgrade called Blessed Immolation. Um, and if you've seen some of my videos before, you know that the prophet at one point was actually quite a speedy leader. He was actually pretty fast. And they changed this. They, they kind of slowed him down a little bit to, I think there was like a, a strategy where he would rush and do his profit beam i don't know but nowadays his speed is is a huge hindrance on him he's so slow and um i think i want to bump his speed up a little bit i don't want to give him really a damage boost or a health boost i think he's good with that especially with his shields he can recharge and recall but i would um i would increase his speed by about 25 percent i think that would be a good baseline and help him keep up with uh, warthogs and help with base defense um, and you know in increase his early game viability where like I was saying he's, he struggles the most with that especially with his honor guards having them now be able to cloak might give him more of an edge and a reason to pick him other than the fact that he's just so sexually attractive all right and that wraps up the covenant leaders the final two units to talk about and they're nothing too special but there are a few Forerunner units that are in the game. So we have the Sentinels. First, we've just got the standard Sentinel. The uh, Another contender for probably the worst unit in the game. Maybe a little bit better than the Cyclops, but it's still pretty bad. It's 100 resources, and it's primarily just used as like a meme or a scouting unit. A scouting unit on Glacial Ravine because it can fly over the the walls is the only really competitive usage I could see it having. So because of that, uh, I'm going to buff the damage and the HP by 50%. And I'm also going to raise the cost of them to 150. So that should make them, you know, just better overall, make them do more damage. Maybe you can cluster up like four or five of them and perform a little hit and run action they're they're already so slow as it is i i doubt that anything really could be done with them but yeah why not buff them by 50 percent. i think that would be good and uh on the two maps that they are that they're on which are glacial ravine and uh, repository might add a little more spice to those matchups there the second unit is going to be the super sentinel which is way way better than the standard sentinel it is uh, 250 resources. Uh, it costs. It requires Tech 2 to construct them. And they have a unique ability to, to slow down and stun uh, units. So you could be stunning infantry, like grunts and hunters, or you could even stun vehicles as well. So it's the only unit that can do that. Um, so similar bow, it's, it's more useful than the... Sentinel, it's still pretty slow. I think we'd give that another another damage buff. Uh, health is fine. It's it's pretty tanky as it is, but I want to increase the damage on that by uh, another fifteen percent. And yeah, I wouldn't really change too much with it. They're seldom used as it is, so I think that would uh, that would help them out. And the last forerunner units are going to be the protectors. And these are kind of more niche. They're only found on the map Labyrinth. Uh, my ideal balancing would just be delete them. Just get rid of them. Delete the Sentinel factories. For the love of God, they're just so annoying to deal with. Um, but in all seriousness, I think that they should just require one technology to create. 
So you either have to have your temple up or you have to have a reactor up in order to build them. But once you do that, I mean, I think that would be enough to balance them because their biggest problem is people just run right there by them because they cause zero tech and then just run over to the enemy base and start harassing supply pads and harassing uh, buildings. So I think that would solve a lot of those rushing rushing issues and make them a little more fun to use and they're just not annoying and uh, really oppressive like they are now. Uh, there are also glitches that can be done with these to make them unkillable and you can there's I'm not quite sure how you do it but you like attach it in such a way where you can like park it in front of the opponent's base and then you can just hide the unit that it's attached to like all the way off in the corner of the map somewhere and it just continually shoots at your opponent's base and there's really nothing you can do about it unless you carpet bomb it or not carpet bomb what am I thinking uh, cryo bomb it or Mac blast it because you can't actually target it. So I would I would fix that glitch and I would not uh, I, I would not allow that to happen. I think that would be a necessary change. So I know this was kind of a longer video. I just want to appreciate you guys for sticking through it. There was a lot of things that I said and uh, a lot of my uh, ideas and my balance changes I think that they could be improved on a little bit so if you thought that I was completely wrong on a lot of stuff or completely right just let me know give me a comment and tell me what you would do and what you agreed or what you didn't agree on but thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next video so this is your boy turnip peace out people